as far back as 1963, um, Premier, then Premier W.A.C. Bennett, when he was building the W.A.C. Bennett Dam, or what came to be known as the W.A.C. Bennett Dam, he wanted to make certain that there was a steady supply and a secure supply of, uh, of skilled labour. Every major project in Canada, whether it's the St. Lawrence Seaway or the W.A.C. Bennett Dam and every dam in British Columbia since then, has used a project labour agreement. It sets forth the rules that are going to apply to all of the contractors that are on site, including, including uh, the use of apprentices. So um, I know that there will be people that are out there that say that they don't like uh, having the, the, um, the memorandum of understanding in place. Um, they're opposed to it, they're opposed to it philosophically. But on big projects, there has to be a steady supply of labor and a steady supply of skilled labor. That's what this brings about. This brings about uh, the security, the knowledge that, that there will be a steady supply. It brings out a knowledge that there's going to be certain wages, benefits, other working conditions that are going to be in place for all of the workers that are there. There shouldn't be any surprises. That's what we want to try and eliminate, are the surprises in this project. Uh, I think that the MOU is a good first step. We've got to get the project underway. We've got to start building BC. Every contractor that goes on to site is going to have the same rules, the same conditions apply. There's not going to be an unfair advantage to one over the other. When everything is on, an, on a level playing field, everybody's treated equally. Um, I think that uh, the, the benefit is really going to be that British Columbia will have a legacy project that is going to be built by skilled tradespeople. And that's what every contractor, I'm sure every contractor, whether they're union or non-union, wants to have is that skilled workforce working that project because this is going to be a legacy project. The Site C project is, um, you know, it, it's, it's ready to go. Hopefully they're going to have shovels in the ground very, very soon and a lot of boot, boots on the ground as well. Um, we know that uh, a couple of the LNG proponents are getting very close to their final investment decisions and that too is going to create all kinds of, of economic activity, the likes of which we've not seen in British Columbia for, well, probably forever. Uh, and I look forward to seeing that kind of activity. Uh, the economy may be slowing down in other areas, um, but I think that in northern British Columbia there's going to be a lot of, uh, a lot of activity, uh, construction activity, and um, I think that we'll probably see a pretty robust uh, economy, especially in northern British Columbia, but it should translate uh, into, into jobs throughout our province. You know, the economy in Canada slowed down in 20, 2008, 2009, and yet because we had, um, you know, the injection of a lot of public capital into projects um, that were related to the, the Olympic Games, uh, we weathered that storm probably better than any other part of, uh, other part of Canada. Uh, we may see, see something that's quite similar to that, is that if we get um, uh, Site 1, or Site C rather, underway and um, and one LNG project, perhaps even a second LNG project, then British Columbia may weather the, the, economic, um, the economic, uh, economic turbulence that uh, the rest of the Canada may experience. Every major project wants to make certain that they've got access to the appropriate skilled labor at a time when they need it. We will enter into agreements with a number of the contractors that are going to be uh, building for these owner clients. Um, this, these, these are projects the size of which we've never seen before in British Columbia and we are going to have to carefully measure uh, what we can do, what we can offer uh, in terms of, uh, of a British Columbia workforce. Look where we can uh, attract other Canadians um, to, uh, to come out and assist us when we need them. 
and indeed even look into the United States where we have a relationship with uh, local unions uh, south of the border to see what we have for available, qualified uh, and productive uh, members. We will use our traditional sources to, to bring in all of the members that we require to, to ensure that our contractors are going to have the skills that they require at the time they require them. That's our commitment to our contractors. That's the contractor's commitment to the owner-client. And I think together we will be able to build successfully the projects that the owner-client wants to have at the end of construction.